In this clip, we're going to be talking about our viewer. The viewer is basically uh, the visual representation of what we're creating. The way I like to see it is kind of like a window of whatever it is that I'm um, building up in there. In the viewer, we have a few different options. We have uh, a few diff uh, the option to scale it up to certain percentages and whatnot. Uh, this doesn't affect the scale of your actual composition. If uh, if you want to affect the scale of your composition, you would have to go to composition and uh, get the composition settings and change that here. This only uh, is the visual representation of um, what this looks like. And uh, the zoom in, you can do it with your mouse wheel if you have a mouse wheel. You can also go to window view, I'm sorry, you can go to view, zoom in, or zoom out, right? But if you have a, a mouse wheel, it would be a lot easier. You can also use the, the keyboard shortcuts, comma and period to zoom in and out quickly. Those are very useful. One of my favorite options here is the uh, shift forward slash. It automatically scales the, um, the composition or the zoom of your viewer into the maximum scale available within within that window. So for example, if I'm right there and I sh and I press control shift, it scales up. And if I make this bigger or smaller, it'll stay up. So that's a really good shortcut. Shift forward slash. On the bottom left corner of our viewer, we have the always preview this view option. Now, if I press it right now, and we won't have any uh, any changes. So for this demonstration, what I have done is I'm going to hide the this cinema effect layer and I created a new composition with that same clip. So what I wanna do is I wanna see both compositions next uh, to each other. And for that, we have a lock button on the top left corner. I'm gonna press that once on this AE intro composition. Then I'm going to go to view, new viewer, and that will give me a second window or a second viewer. If I go to the cinema effect composition, you will see that this, uh, this is the composition that is playing, right? This is the composition that we're working on. But since this always preview this view option is available, if I press my spacebar, this explosion is the one uh, that will that we will be rendering basically. And not only that, it will automatically take us to back to that AE intro composition. So again, I have a, a new composition, we made a new window, and I'm working here, but if I activate this this button and I press my spacebar. It will automatically preview this viewer and it will take me back to this composition in my um, timeline viewer. So in our preview, we also can see that we have we can have different compositions open. OK, and on the right side, you we also have an option to use this viewer. Also very similar to what we just saw for audio and external video preview. We also have some great options like a save title proportional grid and a few different other options uh, like the ruler. Uh, we also have a toggle mask and shape uh, visibility. We'll leave this one for another clip because we're going to talk about masks. And uh, the preview time, just so like on our timeline, we have a preview. Next, we have a snapshot uh, option. And uh, the way this works is to compare two different images. So for example, here, I want to make some um, changes. I'm not very happy with this uh, image. I'm going to take a snapshot and um, let's say I'll make a change on the scale. And once I hit the show snapshot option, you will see that it will show me what I previously had. So that's how that works. Next, we have a channel option, which will show us the RGBs, uh, the red, the greens, the blue and so on. So you can work with your color grading. Next, we have an option to change the uh, resolution of the viewer. So for example, right now it's set to auto 
And the way it works is, well, we still have this uh, set up. So it took us back here. Let's turn this on um, back on and <laughs> back off and uh, let's continue to work with this window only. So the way it works is right now it's set to auto. But if I wanted to change the resolution of the screen to a quarter screen, it will automatically change where you can see that it just looks different. So if I go to full, the resolution is much higher, right? It looks pixelated. So that's just to uh, help you render uh, your, your scenes quicker. And you can customize it also. But um, for the most part, I would say stick with these uh, options here. So on top of that, we have a region of interest. So what that does is we can create an option uh, or a space so we can concentrate on. And uh, that way, our basically our computer doesn't have to render our entire 1920 by 1080. And it uh, can only work on what's here. So for example, that. Okay, so if I turn it off and I turn it back on, you can see that it changes. The reason, one of the reasons why I included these uh, clips were uh, to show that we have uh, this uh, toggle transparency option, which if you're working with elements that have uh, transparency such as these, and you can activate this button so you can see the transparency on the elements, Pretty much it's pretty useful because for example right now if you remember when we made this um, composition and if i go back to composition settings which is Control k you can see that the background color changes so if i change this let's say to a white or maybe a red just so it can be a drastic color you can see that there's a, a red background but if i turn on the transparency you'll see Okay, so I'm going to press Control K just to take this back to black, which I could have done Control C, but okay. Next, we have the option to set like the layout or a view layout. So, for example, right now we have one view. We can go all the way to four views. Pretty much is the same thing, but here you're going to have your top camera, and you'll see that uh, it, this changes once you start act. Uh, well the small viewer itself, the corners turn into blue or light blue once it becomes active. But if you have, a, if you're working with 3D, then you'll see that, for example, here you have the front uh, camera. Uh, here you, it becomes the right camera and here it becomes the, the top camera. Right now we can't really see uh, the difference because, uh, because this is only a, a 2D layout. But you can see that we have different options to work with. Uh, next, we have a button for a uh, timeline. For example, my viewer is still locked to that composition. Uh, but for example, if I unlock it, you'll see that it will go back to that viewer for that composition. But if I lock it again, and in case I just want to work with that, but I come down and I make some changes here, but I want to go back to that composition, which is the one on my viewer, I can simply hit here and that will take me back to that composition. That's in case you have multiple compositions and open at the same time. Uh, here we have another composition flowchart, which we'll leave, uh, uh, we'll leave this one for another clip once we start getting more advanced within the compositions. And then here we have the options to uh, change the exposure of our viewer, basically. This does not affect the final outcome or our final composition. These are just options to help us either color grade or make any other sort of changes. Uh, we have uh, the reset exposure button and the option to change it. We can type in a value or we can slide it. So, and we can just simply reset it. So with that, uh, that's our viewer. Go ahead and get used to it and play around with it. Get used to all these settings so you can start mastering the software and uh, start making cool stuff. I'll see you in the next clip.